Good morning and you're very welcome to this morning's live all about kitchen appliances this morning. Now, my goodness, I thought you had a lot of questions for Ed, but Cyril is going to be very busy this morning trying to get through all of these questions. So thanks so much to everybody who sent them in. I hope that we'll do our best to get through as many as we can. And like last week, what I'll do is I'll try and deal with them throughout the week on stories and we will do our very best to get back to everybody. But uh, sometimes <laughs> we get so many that it does take a little bit of time. So if we don't get to you today, don't worry, we'll do our very best. So appliances, I mean, kitchens, there are just so many of you doing your kitchens at the moment and appliances are such an important consideration. And actually myself and Cyril were chatting during the week and you know, uh, his advice would be start with your appliances, plan the appliances that you want in your kitchen and then start planning the design around those appliances because it's much easier to figure out, well, I want a specific kind of fridge or a specific kind of appliance and then to plan the kitchen around that because a lot of these things will be really tricky to integrate once the build is underway, once you know certain decisions have been made. So it will actually cost you money to go back and try and um, rectify designs or change designs to accommodate appliances you know, when things are underway. So we have so many questions. That's what we're going to focus on today, all your questions. Loads of questions about extraction, particularly downdraft extraction, uh, different kinds of hobs, huge confusion over ovens, which I hope that Cyril is going to help us with this morning, um, and so many, many other brilliant, brilliant questions. And actually, one thing that came through with, with these questions is that there just seems to be so much conflicting advice out there at the moment and you know that is one of the main reasons that i started doing these lives to try and give people a steer to give you really good sound advice so that you have the confidence to make these decisions to part with your hard-earned money you know to to make decisions about your home confidently and just know that you're you're doing the right thing so Hopefully today we will clear up all of this confusion and uh, set you on your way to buy the most perfect appliances for your home and your kitchen. So I see Cyril waiting there now. Let me just... Good morning, Cyril. Morning, how are you, Denise? I'm very good, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Doing what the nation asks us to do, staying at home, staying safe. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah Bad yeah, need yeah. of a haircut, but oh, <laughs> if that's the worst thing to worry We're about. We're all in the same boat there, Cyril, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And no I was problem. just saying in the intro, like, I, I have a really long list of questions here that we'll try and uh, zoom through. And I've tried to group them into different categories and I see there's people asking. So we'll, we'll do our best to cover everything. Absolutely. And look, you and I can try and share afterwards if, if there's any that we don't get to. But I suppose, Cyril, I'm just explaining in the intro, you know, when we were speaking that you were saying, start with the appliances when you're planning yeah. the kitchen. I, I suppose, Denise, where I'm coming from on in, in this, uh, the company I work for, Kitchen Accessories, we're, we're strongly rooted in the kitchen channel. Actually, we're 40 years in business this year. And I'm with the company 30 years this year. So, um, and we work hand in hand with the Kitchen Channel and distributing various brands uh, yeah. from the Deep Ditch to Frankie to Waste Disposal Units, uh, Whirlpool as well, and North Mende. But within that, I suppose, working with the kitchen guys down the years, what we found um, is the ideal scenario for planning your kitchen really is, it's about picking your appliances first mm -hmm. and then designing the furniture around that. I suppose there's obviously other elements in that when you're designing a house, the windows, the light, the sun, all these uh, variables. Mm -hmm. But when you come down to your kitchen, uh, people's, um, they vary, the requirements vary. How many is in the family? Um, you know, do you do much cooking? What sort mm -hmm. of cooking do you do? So when you're planning that kitchen process, what you really need to do is the first stop is with the appliances. Yeah. You need to sit down, uh, go through, see what you want. Um, and bear in mind, and, and again, this is the other thing that would have come true from uh, working with kitchen guys down the years, a lot of people mightn't have got a kitchen for the last 15, 20 years. Sure. So, so much has changed. So the notion of, oh, sure, look, I had a double oven. I'll just get a double oven because that's what people get is double ovens. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, so you need to kind of uh, bring yourself up to speed with all those sort of things and, uh, and then bespoke around your family and build the 
get the appliance list right, and then build the furniture around. And you pretty much are future proof in your kitchen. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, yeah, for, yeah. for the years to come. Yeah, no, uh, and, and you're so right. Like, there's been huge innovation in appliances. I mean, they're, they're so smart now. They they take so much of the stress um, and the preparation and the standing over things out of cooking now. So it's so much easier to, to cook with these uh, modern yeah. appliances. You, you, you have things like Wi-Fi Connect is kind of coming in there. And then there's so many different cooking, uh, alternative different cooking programs. Steam is becoming uh, quite, um, mm -hmm. people are looking for steam now as well as an alternative to, to regular cooking as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole host of stuff. Then you have obviously cooling. The big thing seems to be extraction and uh, yeah. its revolution is, is itself. Steam naturally used to rise. Now we're talking about steam going down. It's defying gravity. So there's a lot of new product out there that kind of needs to be looked at as well. And, yeah. and then the one thing I saw Denise coming through, I, I saw some of the questions there was uh, kind of uh, range cookers and, and uh, yeah. the yeah. whole thing about appliances on the peninsula or on the wall yeah. or on the island yeah. or, yeah. or what way it goes, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, there, there's, no, there's no right, there's no wrong answer. It, it's mm. what's right for a family. And, and you got to go back and you got to look at how you do, how you cook and, and uh, what, what your requirements are. No, definitely. And yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody's needs are totally individual. And I think you said that in the last live that we did, it's like, look at your lifestyle, you know, look yeah. at what, how you want to use your kitchen and yeah. then prioritize that way. No, fantastic. Yeah. So look, I'm, we might just jump in and there's the, the first question, which I promised I would ask number one, and it is about the downdraft extraction. Yeah. And this is a person who uh, they're planning a kitchen at the moment. They have a peninsula with a downdraft extractor, yeah. which they're planning to put in. It's under a skylight. Will there be issues with condensation? Yeah, so so I saw this um, mm. yesterday. You very kindly sent it to me yesterday, and I kind of back-checked it, and uh, I spoke to a few uh, experts in the industry. Yeah. And uh, I suppose the, the first thing about it is that the downdraft sucks downwards. Mm -hmm. So the, I suppose the important thing there is rather than allowing the steam to rise, you need to capture the steam to go down. So a, a powerful hood would be required where possible. And it's on a peninsula unit, I think the, the, the person yeah. said, that yeah. you can actually duct it out because we, we have a hood there, the Nikola Tesla switch, and uh, in, in a ducted version, I wrote it down there somewhere. It, if you go for a ducted, it's 700 meters cube per hour. So it's really pulling down. And the other diverse thing about the, the switch as well is, um, I think you might have a picture of it there, actually. Do I? Okay, so I'm going to try, yes, because you very kindly sent me some. Uh, yeah, so the way it works, it's, it's a stunning hob. So it's an induction hob, uh, mm -hmm. four-zone induction hob, flex zone. And then the extraction is a, is a circular disc in the middle. And that disc okay. kind of pivots from left to right. Is it that? So that's, yeah, that's the gas. Um, gas version, okay, yeah. Yeah, which, which is relatively um, uh, unique to Wellica. There's very few extractors in, in gas that are downdraft. So what you see in that picture there, and I'll, I'll go back to the gas hob, two on the left, two on the right. And in the center, which looks like a gas ring, is actually the extractor. And that's controlled by yeah. one of those knobs there at, at the front. So you're turning it to different power levels. And Denise, it's pretty much doing there. What it should do is it, it's sucking downwards. Gas is probably a little more forgiving in terms of steam because um, it generates 50% heat loss of, um, gas loses 50% of heat over the surface of the hob. So mm -hmm. therefore, when the steam or moisture comes out of the pot, whatever you're cooking, it actually dries it up straight away. So mm -hmm. there's very, very little moisture over um, a gas hob. And I'd say people, if people have gas hobs, they'd probably notice that themselves. Or the mm. real tell one is an aga that always has a hot surface. And when you're cooking with an aga, you, very, you, you don't get steam. You just get flavours uh, coming off the hob. Uh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it, it's because of, because of that. So that's extracting downwards. So mm. this one here is, um, that's the Nikola Tesla um, uh, Prime, which this, this particular guy is uh, 1800 euro retail. And again, what you have is a four zone induction hob, and then you have this corrugated griddle in the middle. And uh, underneath that obviously is the extractor. And you can mm -hmm. see that it's, it's, it's pulling down there um, the whole time. Mm -hmm. So that particular one actually has an extraction rate of 610 meters cubed per hour when it's ducted. So it's very, very powerful and it's doing exactly that. It's mm. pulling the steam down. Mm -hmm. But the, um, and it, it's actually a game changer in price because traditionally 
these hobs come out, they're all in around the 3000 mark. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at something there for 1800, very, very powerful, four zone induction hob. Mm -hmm. And then you have a nice uh, touch with the corrugated yeah. griddle on top of it. No, it's a really and, attractive uh, appliance as yeah. well. It's really lovely. And then is this the one? Uh, yeah, the last one, the, the, the switch one. That's so I, I looked at this one for yeah. this particular query and okay. um, you can see the pivot in it there. So that, that disc rotates to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. And if we, I, I think there's a pan in that image there to the right. And if you pivoted that over to the right, it, 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 it con uh, condenses the extraction. So it actually makes it more powerful. So um, it, it okay. really much works like a vacuum almost. So it, it would literally pull the sizzle off the steak, you know, um, oh it, it becomes wow. that powerful. And yeah. that in that instance, so to answer this question, it's probably the most powerful um, a, a type of hob hood that you can actually get because mm -hmm. you can play around with the velocity of the extraction. Right, yeah, and then yeah. the other point about that question was the Velux itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my only comment on that is that I I'm, I'm not fully aware of this. Is that is it a triple glazed Velux? Because what causes steam is uh, temperature temperature changes mm -hmm. and if it's a double glazed um, the glass would tend to be cold mm -hmm. whereas if it's a triple glazed the inner glass tends to be warm mm -hmm. so by virtue you don't get a build up of steam on it mm -hmm. so th the answer to the question is yes she can do it and mm -hmm. um, ducted would be the preferred op uh, option maybe th that particular customer has a passive house where you know they can't actually um they don't want to put holes in the side of the wall and mm -hmm. um, you lose the extraction rate drops to about 550 or 550 as opposed to 620 mm -hmm. there thereabouts when you recirculate it but by having that rotating disc it allows you to focus um to concentrate the more extraction in certain areas and okay. and i suppose look the average cook would be a, a, a pot of spuds and a pot of vegetables on one side, you know, and mm -hmm. then something in the oven cooking away. So you can kind of shift the, the extraction to one side. Very good. So, okay. um, so that particular guy is 2.8. It's stunning. It, it really is. And do you know, a lovely little trick that I saw in a, in a kitchen studio when, they, when a customer fitted it is they rebated it down into the granite. So it actually, it, look, Flush. it's only about, yeah. Gorgeous. So it's actually okay. completely flush. So mm -hmm. when you're sitting, you know, as I always say, the, the kitchen is an extension of the living room. So mm -hmm. when you're looking back into the kitchen or end of the living room at night time, you, you don't actually see the hob. You just see this Gorgeous. Sh sheet of shine. Yeah. You know, and actually, you know, if people are worried about sink or hob, which we got lots of questions about on yeah. islands, that's ideal because then you do have that lovely flush surface, you know, if you want to put yeah. it on an island. It, it, it's, yeah. yeah, look, I, I, that question it comes up all the time, and yeah. uh, I suppose I battled it with it myself. I think people find the solution with what they do. So in my own instance, I actually have the sink on the hob, and what we tend to do, and obviously the, the uh, sorry, the sink on the island and the mm -hmm. hob again the wall. So what we tend to do is when we're sitting around the island during the week eating, I just put all the pots onto the hob. <laughs> Oh, where yeah. if that were, you know you just move them away yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you kind of just you just adapt to kind of keep the area clean mm -hmm. so again there's no right there's no wrong answer uh, you know you could your um why i chose to put the sink in the middle is we we have a, a good view out that particular window so i just fancied you know we only use the hop certain times a day whereas we're always around the sink doing stuff mm -hmm. And I just want to take advantage of, of the view. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just finding out what's what's right for you. But a nice little tip that if you do go for the um, hob on the island, that kind of flush mount it. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really nice. And no dirt. It, it doesn't get any dirt it around it. It doesn't gather dirt, no, of course. And actually, I see yeah. a really good question there about noise. And I suppose most people now are, as you say, they're living in their kitchen. It's part of a, yeah. a, a living, a family space. So, so noise from appliances can be an issue. What are the recommendations yeah. there with extraction? And, and, and in particularly the hood, because look, let's face it, um, the hood is a noisy appliance. It's a motor. It's doing a really powerful job. And, um, you know, if you look at when you're vacuuming, the noise a vacuum cleaner actually makes, uh, you know, and that's that's kind of creating a vortex of air, mm -hmm. a lot like uh, an extractor as well. Mm -hmm. So the more powerful ones, that particular one is a 61 decibel level um, on full speed. But again, what you have to remember with this is the hood is quite powerful. So you don't need to turn it on full tilt the whole time, the whole you know. Time, yeah. You can have it on at 
if you were doing, um, you know, if you're doing a pasta or a boiling spaghetti or something like that, mm. as opposed to having the hob on full, the hood on full and, mm. and, and water spitting all over the place, turn the, 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 the heat down to six or seven and turn the hood down to four or five. So it reduces the, the noise. The interesting thing about these, um, the, the, that particular switch is it has after running as well. So, um, and it has an auto function. So if you hit the auto, what happens is as it senses more steam, it reacts and it comes on more and it declines more as needed. And then it can run for, for a little time afterwards as well. Okay. So, um, so look, they do create a noise, but you don't need to turn it on. Actually, again, just my own house. I, I don't have one of these. I have one again, the wall. And uh, I noticed that people just turn it on full and I walk by and I turn it back because it doesn't need to be on full. No, no, um, no, sure. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, no, that, that's, that's great. Great tip. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. And yeah, then I suppose people asking, are the hobs with the built, um, built in extraction worth the extra money? Um, or, or what is the, what's the difference there, if, you know, versus going? Yeah. Traditional so if, if you, so my answer is yes, is, okay. is the answer. The, mm -hmm. the value that the previous one there, the Nico Tesla Prime bought to the market, you know, it, it, um, Elica, who would be the largest manufacturer of uh, hoods in, mm. in Europe, took to the, the decision to bring out, I suppose, what you call a loss leader. And they, uh, they launched the Elica um, Nicotessa Prime. And by doing that, they recaptured the market. Um, so it's a really, really good value uh, one. It's, it's, it's quite powerful. Mm. They, they work very, very efficiently. Like there's a, the, the motor is located underneath to the left. So that if there's any spills that go into the tub underneath, it's actually funneled off to the right and there's a little drain underneath it. So all you simply do is go, get underneath it and then you, you open right. it and you can drain it out from underneath yeah. um, and the motor off to the other side. Then there's filters um, in, inside in it. The Elica Prime come with one year filters mm -hmm. and you can replace them. It costs 200 euro to replace them for long life filters. And these filters pretty much last for five years. Okay. So when you've used up your, your filters that come with it, they're mm. just uh, one year filters. You can buy the long life filters, put them in and they last for five years. And what you do to refresh them is you put them in the oven and, and uh, you, you heat them up to 200 degrees for I think it's about an hour and, and it re revitalizes the filters mm -hmm. and that particular hood we're looking at there the switch that comes with these filters long life filters as standard so there are differences between the entry model one and the likes of this switch yeah. the switch yeah. one as well yeah. the, the technology i spoke about the the controlling where the aspiration goes up or down uh, is, is is really nice and then the hob itself is an induction hob, you know. So this particular one we're looking at, the switch, that has flex zones, which means you could potentially get three pots on either side. Mm -hmm. And again, the cheaper, uh, the, the entry model one, the um, 1800 euro prime one has kind of four zones on it, uh, mm -hmm. just got four zones on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's an in induction as well. And we'll talk about induction in a moment, but it just brings cook into a whole different level. So you're really getting the best off on, on the cooktop and you're getting the best off on, on the extraction. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, from an aesthetic point of view, I suppose a lot of people go for vaulted ceilings now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, the notion of putting the skylight above your hob 15 years ago, well, it just wasn't there. You know, yeah, people you didn't, didn't have do the it. option, no, for sure. And now people kind of appreciate more open spaces because they mm. passive housing and stuff like that. Mm. So you can imagine if you've got an island hood and, it, and a chimney flue hanging down, I don't know, six, eight foot, and then this mm. sheet of steel hanging off it. Um, they're, they're awkward to turn off. They distract light. They, they take away from the kitchen itself. Um, so I would definitely recommend for somebody who's going for something on an island to definitely look at the an eco uh, nicotels hood that fits their budget mm. um, no it's fantastic uh, Cyril. and uh, you know because we did get lots of questions like what are the alternatives to the conventional sick of bumping my head off it you know i've yeah. done that umpteen times so no it is it's great but actually and, just, oh sorry go on yeah no sorry i was just gonna say there is like there is another option there is the ceiling hoods as well you know so, so the these hoods, mounted, yeah 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 they mount into the ceiling but mm -hmm. do you know something? Does a body work with these guys? Because if, mm -hmm. if it's a um, if if it's a retro kitchen that you're fitting, you you have to drop a mount. So your uh, builder is going to have to build a frame to to facilitate the hood to go up into it because it's about three hundred and fifty mil deep. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, so you're kind of building a box down. Uh, the, the, the builder's got to do it. And then you're kind of looking at this box. And before you know where you are, the hood in it, and then you kind of trim it around with spotlights or you recess it down off the ceiling and you put a strip light around the top of it to kind of make mm-hmm. a feature out of it. And, uh, and then you have to put your hood in there, which is about 800 euro for a good ceiling hood. Mm-hmm. And then your hob is about 600 euro. Mm-hmm. And the builder, and before you know where you are, it's going to cost you about 2,000. Yeah, whereas exactly. you can have a solution like this. Yeah, the, the-, only, the only downside I would say of this is, if it's even a downside, is you lose a little bit of space underneath it. You, you, you lose a drawer. You and know, that's the, the question the that, that someone's just asked, actually. Yes, do you oh, lose okay. space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, you that's you do lose point. because um, I don't have the actual depth of it, but I'm going to say it's, it's uh, I, I think it's about 300 mil deep. So what you'd have is kind of a false um, false drawer underneath the, the countertop. And as mm-hmm. I said, you can recirculate them or, or you can duck them out um, mm-hmm. More and more people are going with recirculating uh, kits because of uh, passive um, housing. Mm. And basically, when you buy a, a recirculated one, it comes with all the ducting that brings it back down to the skirting board. Mm. And, and you can point it in whichever direction you want, you know. Mm. I, I don't think it's ideal to have the wind blown back in under your legs when you're mm. standing at the hob. No. So maybe you have it going out the other way or, or shoot it off to the sides or or whatever okay. Okay. You, you, you'd work that with the kitchen guy and if you are looking at going for a ducted version you need to and again this goes back to the very start point of pick your appliances and plan around it because mm-hmm. the most important thing you need to do is you need to get the ducting into the uh, sub floors mm-hmm. underneath foundation mm-hmm. to facilitate it yes. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless you're going for a peninsula unit like that lady was doing where she can actually run a ducting underneath the underneath the units to the outside wall. And out to the wall. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Excellent. Brilliant. Yeah. My yeah. goodness, we've been 22 minutes nearly on, on uh, downdraft extractors, but look, oh, fabulous yeah, yeah. information. So thank yeah, you. No, so look, yeah. time well spent. Um, yeah, and actually yeah. people are buying them as well. Actually, the, the guy I saw counseling yesterday, uh, he was telling me people are actually just buying them and putting them again, windows, um, do you know, again, a wall. So you can have a window behind mm-hmm. your hob. Imagine that, looking at the kids or whatever yeah. going on out yeah. nature, passing yeah, by yeah, yeah. outside. Um, and then some people just put them where they have wall units, but they just put the um, downdraft and they don't put an extractor above it. So okay. people are looking to alternative uses to what they have. And we will have a 60 mil version of it coming out later on in the year as well. Okay. Um, Nikita's a slim, so they're all 80 mil. So there's going to be a 60 mil version of it. Oh, that's out great! Well. Okay, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, yeah, brilliant. So, so great. Um, so we might hop on to cookers because uh, now this yeah. is one where there is huge confusion. So, I mean, there was one um lady who said that they're currently pl- uh, picking kitchen appliances for a new build, very confused about ovens, think a double oven is fine for us, but work and works out 500 euros cheaper than two single ovens. However, the kitchen manufacturer, the retailers, everybody's trying to push them towards two single ovens, saying double yeah. ovens will soon be a thing of the past. So just wondering, is that good advice? Is it sound advice? What, what is your advice, Cyril? Yeah, so, you know, double ovens uh, will soon be a thing of the past. And that is a correct statement, but it's not going to happen for uh, a long time. In actual fact, double ovens are only manufactured for the Irish UK market. If you look into the continent, they don't manufacture um, double ovens at all. Mm -hmm. And if people are looking, say, German kitchens or Italian kitchens or whatever, and they have the brochures, you'll never see a double oven in these brochures. So I suppose the notion is that uh, our our Euro friends are are out barbecuing in the summer and we're in the kitchen grilling (laughs) because Mm -hmm. of the weather. But um, but double ovens are in decline, and when people are changing up their kitchen, and there's a bit of a habit with it. Should we always had a double oven, and it was great, so we're just going to go with a double oven again. And mm. um, tends to favour over a double oven is a single oven and a combi microwave. Um, and th- that person there saying about it, it's it's five hundred euro more expensive. The beauty of getting a single oven because there's not too many double ovens available in the market that are pyro clean. So like we do a Nordmende uh, power clean oven for uh, 499. We do a Whirlpool power clean oven for 499 as well. And then we do a De Dietrich who invented power clean, I'll explain what power clean is in a moment, for 799. So there's a, there's a, there's a range there uh, that fits everyone's pocket. And basically what a pyro clean oven is, it's brilliant, it's a game changer. So when you've used your oven for a month, you just take out the wire trays, turn the oven to the setting, 
and pretty much what you do is um, the oven goes up to 475 degrees and it incinerates everything inside it and you dust it out and your kit, your oven will always look like new. Mm-hmm. So no cleaning it, it, and you get oh, that in the same oven. Sarah, it's life changing and none of that toxic stuff that you have to spray into the, the oven. So, you know, oh, from an yes. it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And, and some people often say like, you know, cleaning out an oven is a chore. It's, it's like that Good Friday chore that you do. But cleaning up after you've cleaned out the oven is, is a chore as well because of the yeah, grease, yeah. cloths, the floors, the doors, everything. So you get these pyro. That's actually the py- That's the Nord Mende. It's stunning looking oven. 500 mm. euro. So you can actually get two of those. Um, and, this, and then you can get a combi microwave to match it that sits above it. Mm. So that's a smaller appliance. That's 45 centimeter. So what you get in that is you get a microwave. So if you want to do your popcorn or heat up the milk or whatever, you can do that. Mm. There's a grill in there. If you want to do a toasted cheese sandwich or grat on a potato or something, th- there's a grill in there to do that as well. Then there's an mm. oven. So if you just want to do a, a small I don't, chicken breast or something like that, you can cook them in the oven. But then it cuts into this other function where they can be cooked. And uh, potentially you could roast a chicken in about 45, 46 minutes, which would take about one hour, 40, one hour, 50. And what it's doing is it's using the fan, the grill and the microwave. So it's combining all those elements Brilliant. together to give yeah. you a very, very speedy cook. Amazing. And it's yeah. something I have and it's something we use a lot. Haven't used it much since the pandemic because we have a little bit more time more in our time, hands. More time, yes, of course. And, and, and where I'm coming around to, I suppose, in the conversation is, and I see a lot of people and a lot of, again, the, the feedback I get from kitchen guys across the country at all mm-hmm. different uh, ends of the value market is uh, people mm-hmm. looking to maybe get double oven, or sorry, two single ovens as opposed to an oven and a combi. Some mm-hmm. people don't necessarily like microwave cooking. You know, they, they're, they're happy enough with a, with a 50 euro microwave in the utility room or something like that. And by getting two single ovens, in that, in that particular oven you're looking at, um, actually, no, it's not in that one. It's in a work, but I can send you that image. Please. There's a function called warming drawer function. And pretty much it allows you to set the oven onto warming drawer. So if you were using one oven during the week, you could have the other one on warming drawer, have the plates in there, get them to a nice temperature. It's about 100 and uh, 90 degrees, uh, sorry, 90 degrees, and it doesn't take the moisture out. It's being prepared into the, main, into the other warming oven now. I pop it all in there, and you can serve, and you're serving nice hot food. So you get a really big cavity there to, to, to keep things warm. And mm-hmm. also, I suppose those state occasions like Christmas and Easter, that if you were doing something like a turkey that co- cooks at 160, and you want to roast potatoes, you can put them up into the uh, other single oven and why I'm shying away from a double oven is that in actual fact if that customer looks at a double oven and looks inside in it and the cavity uh, and you can't put food on the floor of that oven you can't put food up too high underneath it because it's a grill so you actually only get probably about three or four inches of, of usable yeah. space yeah. so in effect what that oven in essence does is it grills and it stores the roasting dish uh, okay yeah so I think we're losing connection with you there a little bit. Sarah, I think we might have lost you there. Sugar, we trouble with Wi-Fi last time when Sarah was with us as well. Um, well, I might, let me just see if I can get him back. Sorry about this. Now we seem to have lost Cyril. So I'll try and invite him back. Let me just see. Okay. There we go. Let's see if that works. I know he has terrible trouble with his Wi-Fi. Here we go. He's coming back. Let's see. But hopefully that answers all the questions because we'd so many just about um, whether to go for two single ovens, um, steam ovens as well. An awful lot of questions about that. And actually what I have myself is a single oven with a combi steam oven. And I have to say, and I've said this to a few people who texted in, the steam oven is probably my favorite appliance of all of the appliances. It's just so easy to use. Um, I probably use it more than the oven. And I hardly ever have to, to boil anything anymore. I mean, it's just so convenient. 
you can cook multiple things in it. It'll prompt you to tell you when certain things are ready. So it does take so much of the stress out of um, cooking and no boiling things on the hob, which is wonderful. So there's no uh, steam buildup, no pots and pans. Um, so it's really, really fantastic. It's a fantastic appliance. So let me see. I just try. I think he's having difficulty joining us. Try again. Sorry about this now. And I know range cookers as well. So Cal supply a huge range. The, uh, Cyril will go through them as well. But we had lots and lots of questions about range cookers um, and just cookers to use if you have an aga. So just as a little backup. So I know Cyril has lots of advice about that too. Let me just see if I can. I think he's struggling with his Wi-Fi a little bit. So I'll see, I know there was one question that came in about colors for kitchens, which I will hop in here. So somebody's saying, I'll just try and find it. What colors um, to use for kitchens now? Sort of, they were fed up with grays and navies. And I mean, there has been such a trend in, in kitchen colors for darker shades, you know, the, the lovely dark greens, dark navies, off blacks, which look fabulous. But I think that um, now, you know, uh, the white kitchen is sort of, I'm sorry, just see Cyril here, let me see. Uh, the white kitchen is really, really popular. And I, I just think a white kitchen is so timeless. You know, it'll, it'll work with anything, any kind of colors you want to introduce. So we're seeing a lot of people, um, you're back. Oh, you're, oh, you're crystal is... clear now. Your Wi-Fi, Cyril. Well, do you know something? We have, um, I'm talking to this fabulous guys and I see them here, the Cable Kings, and they're going to be joining me in a couple of weeks talking about Wi-Fi and stuff. So I must send you their details. <laughs> Look, last time, I, I, that's, that's kind of the playroom, I suppose, which is now the office. And I kind of work from there and, and it's, it's never let me down. Oh, <laughs> but goodness, um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's very windy. It's very stormy. I'm up, I actually live up in the Dublin yeah. Mountains and okay, uh, it's blowing yeah. a gale out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it is wild. It's snowing, it's raining, it's windy, it's sunny, jeepers, it's, yeah. uh, it's so, everything. But so look, I've just I just moved anyway, so I'm near well, the, uh, the router. <laughs> you're, you're beside the router. Fabulous. Okay. Well, look, um, range cookers and lots of people saying, like, there's a lady there so stressed out trying to pick a range, um, a electric range cooker that looks great, runs efficiently. You know, what, what's your advice? Yeah, yeah. So listen, they they all run efficiently. I suppose is is, is the first thing because mm. and they run as efficiently as built in a pl as as a built in single oven, mm. um, because they sh they pretty much share the same elements in internally. Um, I suppose the top configuration would be: do you go for gas or do you kind of go for for induction? But the like we do a brand called Bertazzoni, and it's it's kind of an Italian premium uh, brand. Uh, the components for the gas, they're kind of cast iron, they're very, br there's actually brass elements in them as well in the, in the gas um, flame spreaders. Uh, they can operate so low, they can actually kind of ch melt, chopped up melt function on it for gas, which is really good. The doors of them are really, really sturdy and it's a very robust, it's, it's a very kind of, um, it, it's got a very uh, it's kind of industrial kind of feel off it as well. Mm -hmm. And these Bertazzoni, they, they started about 3,000 and they worked their way upwards to up on about 7,000. And what you get for that is any color you want and they send it off to Ferrari to spray it for you oh, and it's right. lacquered and stuff like that. So there's, there's no issues there. Yeah. But like that too, we also, we will have a new range cooker coming in. Um, I think it's going to be a thousand euro. It's going to be a Nord Mende. It's going to be a tree cavity, two, uh, two 60 centimeter open, then a grill and a little storage drawer. And it's going to have, I think I only saw it the once before lockdown, it's going to have a seven burner top on it. Okay. And that's going to be retailing at about a thousand euro and uh, it'll have a three year warranty. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, the, the only thing with the range cooker and I see so many posts from people where they go for the mantle and, you know, to go for oh, the yeah. range cooker yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And when I get people, uh, if our showrooms does open, which hopefully it will, and people get in, I, I always tell people to take a tray, put it in there six or seven times because that's what you'd be doing daily for however long you're going to be looking at this kitchen, which we'd hope would be about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them to do the same exercise with an eye level oven. It's an easier thing. It, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's better on your back, you know. Um, sure, yes. We're only getting older, not younger, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to future-proof your kitchen. Yeah. So um, 
I personally like the idea of the built-in uh, wall-mounted, the, the suit lifestyle. Um, they have telescopic shelves. I don't know how, how far in there are cut off, but the ovens have telescopic shelves in them as well. Mm. And uh, so you're just sliding stuff out and you can prod it, poke it, baste it or whatever, and just push it back in push again. Back in. Whereas if you had something in a range cooker, you're lifting it out, pulling up to top, basting it and whatever, uh, putting it back in. Yeah. And the other thing as well is because the cooker is underneath the hob, if somebody, you know, a kid was coming down and they just wanted to fry noodles or do noodles for themselves or something, mm. you're all in around one space. Whereas yeah. when you have them moved away, somebody... Do you know you're not all hanging That's around one area saying, yeah, they're standing in front over. Of the cooker. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, fry yeah. an egg or something like yeah, that, you know. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, no, um, fabulous. but they are all energy efficient, you know. The, pro, the, the most I'd say uneconomical um range cooker of them all, um, but it's a lifestyle choice and it forms a completely different function is the aga, the, the iconic aga itself. It's um, while there are agas that have a clad of an aga and they're electric they just plug in the traditional aga you leave it on all the time you know yeah. so it's running on oil it's running on electricity it's costing you about 35 euro there thereabouts a week mm. but it's actually heating your room as well and it's a lifestyle choice and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, it 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 would enhance certain certain families you know um again i think i said before i grew up in a farming background there was an aga there mm -hmm. you know when when you come in late at night with wet clothes, you just threw them up on the aga and they were dry the next morning and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. so it was really really a workhorse but it wouldn't be the most efficient but it, it the, the cooking results are, are stunning and stuff from sure. us as well yeah 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 so, and um, actually sir we got one question just somebody asking for a recommendation of a a nice affordable oven as a backup oven. They already have an aga, so they just want something. Yeah. Else. So look, the the the, the um, Nordmende four nine nine or the Whirlpool four nine nine. It's a pyro clean oven, um, multi function. So there's a fan oven in it. There's a conventional oven in it. Uh, there's a grill. They have a fan and grill function. They have mm -hmm. a bottom element function, which is really nice for pizzas, uh, cooking pizzas and stuff as well. And that's a really nice uh, value backup oven. Um, if you wanted to go for the kind of premium end, there's a 799 the Dietrich Pyroclean. And actually, you'd one of the pictures there uh, that mm. I chose was it was a black uh, the Dietrich oven, oh, yeah, which is it. really, really popular. Um, I see all these kind of dark, muted kitchens coming out. You can see it there. The control panel on it is, is, is uh, black uh, on it. I, I don't know if you can see, I can't see, if you can see the control knob on it, it works yes, by a dial, lovely. which yeah. is very, very user uh, in, inter uh, friendly. That oven is a 72 litre capacity. It's a full pyro clean oven. That particular one you're looking at is um, 1100 euro, but mm -hmm. it has these autonomous cooking programs, um, chef mode. So you basically put the meat in, tell it what you're putting in and it automatically cooks it. Mm -hmm. So that's probably too premium for a backup for, a, for an aga, which you'd imagine will be going most times but maybe just not during the summer exactly. and that's why i'd look yeah. to maybe the likes of that nord mende 499 so it's pyro clean so when you're done with it clean it and just leave it there and then you can t you can use it as a warming drawer function or whatever for, for the christmas period or something like yeah. that yeah fantastic so okay. but th that that black is really really popular and uh, and there's little go uh, or brass trim in it i don't know if you can see that in, in it there as well and mm -hmm. uh that ties in people looking at lights and stuff like that as well. Oh, I know so, they're such attractive appliances. Yeah, they're really, really beautiful. They're yeah. Beautiful Again, a three-year warranty with those as mm. well. So there's, a, mm. you know, most German brands would bring in a two-year warranty, but with this, we're bringing in a, a, a three-year warranty three, yeah. um, with, with it as well. And you can multi-layer cook. So that person with the double oven, they could say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm cooking the roast. And sometimes, you know, I want to grill a few sausages or rashers. You can actually put them into the main oven with the roast. Mm. And the, the, the movement of the air around it will actually kind of grill it as well. Great. OK. And actually, there's one question here um, about steam ovens. And I was just saying while you were finding your Wi-Fi that I have a steam oven and it's probably my favorite appliance. Like I would recommend it hands yeah. down, you know, um, but people saying, A, are they worth the money? And then another question saying, which is more practical, a steam oven or a combi steam regular oven? Yeah, so like the Dieter is just, it's about to launch a full size um, steam oven. So a 60 centimeter steam and fan oven, which is going to be about 1500 euro. Mm. And the, I suppose the answer to that is steam cooking is more nutritious. It, it retains vitamins, it retains flavors. And mm. um, when you're cooking meat with steam, it, it, it's more tender as well. So when you're doing roasting, 
and stuff like that. You know, some people used to put moisture in the bottom of the oven to kind of yes, tenderize yeah. meat uh, and whatnot. So definitely it's, um, there's more, um, it, it's a better cooking method uh, for, for, st- for st- again, it's more expensive. And I suppose the question is, it goes back to the, the, the start of it. How much cooking do you do? Do you like cooking? Do you embrace it? Do you do you try new dishes? Do you try new things? Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a lifestyle, um, vegetables and stuff like that that you can actually put them into the oven as well. And mm-hmm. if you're kind of saying yes, yeah, all these, it you probably would be looking to go for for a steam oven. The, mm-hmm. the one with the steam uh, combi, which is a, a compact appliance, you know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a forty-five centimeter, so mm-hmm. it's probably slightly smaller, so you can only do one thing at a time. So I'd probably be more pro of going for the full size steam oven mm-hmm. over the uh, combi, over the smaller one. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, it, it would give you more variety. You could put vegetables in there as well. And, yeah. um, oh, no, I, I find it's just amazing. And, and as I was saying while you were um, gone there for a little bit, just that I hardly ever boil anything anymore. So I would cook rice, vegetables. You can, you know, put multiple things in there and it just prompts you. So you don't have to think about it. There's no standing over yeah. pots or... Washington even pots, reheating, uh, even for reheating, oh, you know, like, um, reheating. Yeah, yeah. It, like, yeah. It, it wouldn't be unusual for us again in our little ha- ha- family home here to, to cook two dinners on a Sunday mm-hmm. with one of them for the Monday and then you can just reheat it in the, in the steam oven, in you know. Steam oven, yeah, no, no, no it's, it's good as if you made it that day. It's great. Wonderful. OK. And then, Cyril, um, somebody asking about freezers and yes. uh, options for freezers they don't want to go for a double fridge freezer in a kitchen space um recommendations around freezer drawers are they good for islands uh what's your advice there yeah I, I, again actually behind me what you see there is that's i had an american fridge here at one stage and about three mm-hmm. years ago um i reconfigured it and now what i have is a full height fridge and a full height freezer and mm-hmm. um the freezer is stuffed at the moment. We're hearing about the snow all the week. So um, it's like a bread shop in there at the moment. So it, it, it's definitely, uh, definitely worth it. But look, if you don't have the space, and again, what we see, uh, the trends coming through the kitchen retailers around the country is people are buying under counter freezers and they're allocating them. So if you don't have to give up the countertop space uh, for a full height unit, that you can actually go for an under counter freezer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so full height Lara fridge like, like one unit there and then in your island or another unit somewhere else you'd mm-hmm. have an under counter freezer and right. it's getting yeah. very very popular so mm. i'd say that's well thought out and um if they just don't have the, the like the full height freezer is amazing the, the amount of stuff that you can get into it but if you just mm. don't have the space you don't have it the best second mm. best option is to go for an under counter integrated freezer because it actually goes in underneath the plinth as well. So um, ah, you might get an extra sneak yeah. loaf of bread in there or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know. Brilliant. Okay, wonderful. And then, so, you know, uh, very important, and you have a fabulous image, which I'll pop up here, but people asking um, best integrated coffee machine. Yeah, so um, what, you're, what you're looking at there is, so we do too. Um, so there's, there's many different models on the market. Uh, I, I suppose I own one myself. Um, I always loved it, but I, well, we always liked it, but we just fell in love with it since lockdown. I, I think I was saying to you yesterday, it's, it, you know, again, I, I, as a family of five, there's kids in school and college and stuff like that. We, we all congregate around the coffee maker at about 11 o'clock for a latte or whatever, have the chats and, and go our different ways. Great. And um, while people were making banana bread, we were online buying these fabulous cups to make coffee and glass cups and all these sorts lovely, of things. Lovely. So yeah. that one there you're looking at is uh, 2000 euros. So it fits in line and then uh, it's an espresso and a coffee maker. And there's a flask that goes with it as well. So it froths up the coffee. And then you put the beans in. The unit actually slides out. So there's a clip mm-hmm. underneath it. You release the clip, it slides out. And then you can fill it with beans or powder coffee. I prefer the beans, grinding it down. And then it just dispenses. It, there's a container that you fill with water. And it dispenses the coffee, obviously. And then the beans go into a, a, a bin. So you empty it. So it's not plumbed. And uh, it doesn't wash through. You have to put the water into it. And then separately, there's a flask. So if you want to make your lattes or cappuccinos, you put mm. the water or the milk into the flask and you, you hook it up to that. Mm. So that's one solution, which is which is 2000 at the, the kind of true premium end of the market. And then the other really nice one, and actually, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture, 
but uh, is the W11 by Whirlpool have just launched a new coffee maker. And it actually has an interactive uh, uh, touch face on it. So it's kind of touch control. And you can give you one cup, two cups, this kind as well, actually. And then you can do your cappuccinos and lattes. And it's coming in at 1600 euro and pretty much has the same sort of function. Mm-hmm. Um, in actual fact, if they look at Ireland AM in the, in the cooking slot, uh, you'll see it's Whirlpool uh, in, the, in the cooking theatre to use. And the coffee maker they launched complements the oven. Um, and it's a 45 oh, centimetre. Uh, unit okay and then some people there's a warming drawer underneath that one actually do you see that it's a very oh, narrow yes. warming drawer. Okay, lovely. Yeah. yeah 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 and the notion of that warming drawers were bought out as a result of coffee makers because the, the, the coffee's the only just, yeah exactly coffee lovely. comes out at 88 degrees rather than burning the beans so yeah. the notion was that would actually heat the cup but people move beyond it they start putting plates and dinners and stuff All in it and it's great i have a warming drawer it's brilliant Brilliant. Wonderful. And actually, yeah. Cyril, so all of the machines you would have, they grind their own beans. Is that right? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you can just okay. get the aroma coming through. Lovely. As I said, it's like, it's like a little Starbucks in here. Every morning. Lovely. <laughs> no, because just somebody asking, do they take Nespresso pods? Are there Nespresso machines that can be integrated or they're all, they're all, uh, they're, they're all freestanding. Yeah. Because I did yeah. some research into that for somebody um, and they tend to be uh, freestanding. But no, it doesn't take pods. It, it, it takes uh, beans. And no more than anybody else in the country, I got online and I started filtering uh, coffee, beans and all the rest. And Mm -hmm. uh, we were bringing in kg bags of coffee, (laughs) coffee beans from various uh, Brazil and all sorts of places around the world. You know, Um, there's importers. I think it's an importer from Kenny actually that does it. So we kind of hooked up with him. But again, all this stuff is available to see in in our showrooms in in City West. We we have a we have a 14,000 square foot showrooms. Our, our function there is it's, it's not to sell to you because we don't sell to you. We only mm-hmm. sell through um, our, our kitchen and mm-hmm. electrical retailers. But what we try to do is give you the most professional advice that we can give you mm-hmm. when you're investing into a kitchen that you mm-hmm. choose the right appliances that are there for you um, mm-hmm. in, in that showrooms. Yeah, um, brilliant. Because what, what we have in there also as well that I, we, we kind of did mention it were the, the sinks and taps as well. Well, look, I just finish on that, Cyril, yeah. Uh, yeah. really quickly, because, again, that was the, the, the other topic that we got. Lots of questions about where the hot water taps uh, are yeah. they worth the money. Safety always comes up. Um, you know, I have yeah. it myself. There's no issue. They all have inbuilt safety features. So there's no concern. about. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've one there as well. And uh, mm. safety isn't an issue. Um, you, you actually have to kind of depress them and stuff like that. So th- yeah. they're, they're, yeah. they're really, really good. So yeah, so the, you're looking at an image. So it's a 100 degree boiling hot water. So we have a Frankie one there for uh, it's uh, 1,009 euro. So what you get for that is you get your regular hot, you get your regular cold, and then you get a uh, 100 degree boiling water the tank is actually at the very bottom there so it's a horizontal tank so it can go in underneath your skirting board or your kitchen plinth mm-hmm. it's a liter tank and the water stays in there condensed at 108 degrees so when it does come out through the spout it's coming out at uh, 100 degrees um for your water and it okay. filters the water going into the tank as well so there's no components or, or, or bits in that mm-hmm. and it's basically 100 degrees so yeah look for a cup of tea uh, last night I was doing a pasta or something like or a boiling spaghetti just mm. filled it up with boiling water it was boiling within two minutes sort of thing mm. um sterilizing I was uh, washing out um, yes. the George Foreman's you know the thing the, the old yeah. riddle thing yeah, from yeah, Georgia yeah, yeah. I yeah. just threw them underneath it turned on the boiling water and yeah. hey presto just cut out through everything so everything definitely kind of feels cleaner and there's a nice little feature with the Frankie one that you can actually um you can bypass your hot tank and you can have direct water access. So when you turn on your water, it comes out at 65 degrees instantly. So wow. if you don't have solar panels, if you're, again, doing a retro kitchen, that, and, you know, when you turn on your hot water, sometimes your regular hot water could take a minute to come down from the tank, assuming the immersion is on and all these other things. You, mm-hmm. you get this uh, M-Box technology and you bypass your hot tank and it gives you pretty much about 10 litres of 65 degree water instantly. So it's mm-hmm. really, really good. So no, um, fantastic. And, and just, I can't recommend them enough. Yeah, it's such a yeah. great addition. And it frees up counter space. You know, you don't have yeah, the noise, control. particularly for open <laughs> fan yeah, spaces. Yeah. So it's really good. And, and you're really protecting really the, the, the carcasses, the units from steam. Just yeah. just on that, you know, we, we do, yeah, that, the only reason I was showing that was because of the picture. We will be bringing out, hopefully, in the next two or three months, because uh, we tried a, a Nord Mende, 
boiling tap and it's going to be 99 degrees and um, a two and a half liter tank but it's mm. going to be coming in at 599 euro which is really really competitive wow, that's really and it's going to have a three-year warranty with it as well oh, so right. um, yeah. we're hoping to kind of get some movement on that towards middle end of summer so anybody again you know we fit every budget every every value chain but uh, that's something to keep an eye on um, and I tested that and I did the old uh, sturdy robust cup of tea test uh for two weeks and it was absolutely perfect wow you know? okay so, um, yeah, yeah. so the reason why i chose, sent in that picture is i just want to show the kind of i suppose taps chrome taps quite popular but mm. we see a shift people kind of buying um more black darker color taps mm. uh to, to you know to match the kitchen with the, yeah because yeah. the, the yeah, black yeah, exactly. ironmongery and everything has yeah. become so popular now so great to yeah have that option. so um and then we, we have kind of black undermounted sinks as well as mm. as well as as stainless steel so you know 30 years ago when i started we were mad selling colored sinks and colored taps everybody was buying these really oh yeah the, the whole country went blue was uh, buying these things and then i'm going to say in the early noughties Nobody bought a coloured sink. Everybody just bought stainless steel, stainless, stainless steel, steel, stainless yeah. steel. Yeah. But there's now a trend back to coloured sinks, whether it's overmounted or undermounted. Mm -hmm. um, undermounted are really nice with the stone worktops. But what's moved on so much in uh, countertops is this fabulous laminate countertops with lovely square yeah. edges and very uh, modern looking. So Frankie bought a fabulous uh, Tectonite coloured sinks, very, very flat, no mm. grooves on the drainer very modern looking and uh, in, in different colours. But what people do as opposed to put a chrome tap with it because it picks up the chrome waste and the, and the overflow. And then you have a, a nice, very modern kind of uh, coloured sink. So there's, there's a trend back to those as well. And they're very easy to keep clean sure. it, it, uh, yeah. as well, you know, and they're yeah, heat resistant and they're quite tough. They don't scratch like stainless steel. Stainless steel scratches. Um, the coloured yeah. sinks don't scratch. Don't Obviously, if you have a white one, somebody could get on there now and say, hang on, I'm always washing my tea bags." But sure, look, with stainless steel, you have to wash the tea bags down. You have down to anyway, well. exactly, yeah. And, well, and, and just under the sink then, obviously, it's not forgetting your waste disposal unit, oh, yes, which is yes. the, the, an absolute must. Starting at about 249, all your food is going down at there. And... Um, uh, it just washes away to wherever the main storage goes or if you have a septic tank. So and actually, on the waste disposals here, can you retrofit them? Like, are they easy to retrofit? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once your sink, if, if you look down to your sink, once the sink has a three-inch waste outlet, so once the, the diameter of the sink is three inches, you can actually uh, retrofit them. And um, and it's, it's quite an easy fit, uh, retrofit. You need power to it. Listen, I wouldn't do it. I'd get a plumber to do it myself. But it, 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 he'd be in and out in about 40 minutes uh, to, okay. to fit it. Okay. it. We use it every, I'd say we use it about six, seven times a day. Uh, the waste disposal. Yeah. And we're on a, a bio cycle as well. And uh, it's never given us any challenges or, or, or problems. Fabulous. And yeah. um, and we still put the, the you know, the, the peeling, the potato, like if you like composting, and which is really, really good and all the rest. Mm. So you, you can do your potato peelings and, and stuff like that. But the mm. cream cake that was left sitting in the fridge for four days with nobody yet, mm. I don't know about putting that down the end of the garden in a compost heap with rodents and stuff. I just put it down my waist, I suppose, unit. Brilliant. Yeah. So, Wonderful. Um, well, so listen, sir, I, I have two really hungry kids down outside looking at me here trying to get into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I better let them in. Um, but yeah, thank you so. so much. And can you just yeah. share the address, just the address of where? Um, the yeah. So, is? so our, our showrooms is uh, it's, it's 4078 Kingswood Road in, in, in City West. Um, the name of the company is uh, Cal, the Cal Group, KAL Group. Mm -hmm. and uh, www.cal.ie mm -hmm. and as i said that that showrooms is over, well oh, sorry it's under level five it, it's currently closed we yeah. are looking to try and do some virtual stuff in there as well but the, 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 the thing is get in there and um, make an appointment there, there's a team of three or four of them in there that will gladly take you in we don't sell directly to you but we'll give you all the advice you'd need to get the, get it right and plan the appliances first and then yeah. the furniture and stuff around it. No, uh, it's so worthwhile. And I just think it's that advice. It's getting the right advice, you know, yeah. so that you know you're making the right decision. So important. And, a, so and important. a wine cooler was the other. I'm stunned. Like, again, we launched a North Monday wine cooler, 599-649. It's a dual zone. And uh, I think the first container, we got in about 240 of them in July. Mm. Coming out of a pandemic, I, I said to myself, who'd buy them? 
they're sold out and we have about um, another 60 on back well, we order. had ed last week and apparently <laughs> the hottest thing in kitchens now are cocktail cabinets that's what he's designing there you go. so i mean you know this is all we have it's our castle it is indeed and everything okay. else at the moment yeah, absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. Cyril, thank you so much thank okay stay so safe much, everyone so much knowledge and uh thanks everyone for joining have a great weekend okay, take okay care. take care thanks bye 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 bye